65 years ago, the city of Gloucester was an entirely different place. In 1950, for starters, we had no 128 bridge. We had no 128. It was in the making, but it wasn't available to us. 65 years ago, every vehicle that came in and off of Gloucester and Cape Ann came over the Blinman Bridge. Every bit of heavy freight that came into Gloucester came in via the railroad. And the freight yard was on Railroad Avenue where the Shaw's Market is today. And the freight yard spurs were stretched all the way down to the intersection of Maplewood Avenue and Railroad Avenue at the dummy, just where that garage is and the used car lot. And on those spurs, there were many, many freight cars, flat cars with diesel engines for the vessels that were being built to, to increase the fleet in the late 40s and 50s. It was, a, it was a time like no other, and it was a pivotal year. The decade between 45 and 55, that 10 years was the pivotal year for the history of Gloucester and, and for the fisheries in Gloucester. It reached its zenith in 1950, the year I, graduated, I went to Gloucester High School, entered Gloucester High School. Gloucester's adventure played a role at that time in the history making of Gloucester's Harbor. Gloucester's Harbor in 1950, at the peak, had over 200 vessels. We had over 2,000 fishermen. We had on the fish pier alone five working stalls, five companies, each employing 50 people apiece. An ice house and a freezer by Bert Morrissey that was employing another 75 people. Back of that, there were two dehydrating process plants, each working 24 seven from May until October, grinding up the gurry from the, from the fish that was caught. We were landing 100, 200, 300, 400 million pounds of fish annually in Gloucester Harbor. I was part of that from the time I was 12 years old. I loved the waterfront. I was around the waterfront. I fortunately met some wonderful people and was mentored by my friend Ben Pine. At the time I entered high school, I was working full time for Ben Pine as a watchman for his vessels. I had all kinds of responsibilities. I loved him, he loved me. He was a Newfoundlander, just like the captain of this boat, Leo Hines. They loved kids. They wanted kids to get involved because in the future of this industry was the, was the young kids coming along. Say, so always encourage them. So now, late October, this vessel, the Adventure, pulled in to the wharf over there that looks over to Piney's Wharf, Shula's Wharf, or Captain Carlo's Wharf now. On a Saturday morning, I looked across and I saw the adventure. I didn't think too much of it because it was her custom in those days to come to Gloucester in May and in October and November for the winter maintenance and then leave for the winter fishing. But this year was different. She was gonna have her engine overhauled and I found out that she was going to be here November, December, and into January. To make a long story short, during the course of two and a half months, I got to meet Leo Hines, his beautiful wife Lillian, who came down from their Melrose home every Wednesday like clockwork to inspect the vessel and see the progress of the job. He had a man Friday aboard the boat, as all of these boats did, a boatswain type that took care of the, the personal gear on the, gear on the boat. Leo McDonald, and Leo and his wife Rose would come down from their home in Chelsea on the weekends to check to see how the vessel was going. I asked Leo one day, Leo, I'd like to make a trip on the adventure. I'd like to see how that's being done because it's gonna be, it's a vanishing out. All the men are old, I wanna go. And he said, I don't see any reason why you can't, but you have to ask Captain Leo. Well, Captain Leo came down Wednesday afternoon as usual, and I was waiting for him. As soon as I saw him, I asked him, 
and he said, you can come anytime you want. Ah, when would you like to come? I have an idea. I says, I'd like to come on my winter vacation from high school. And he says, you can come anytime you want. Welcome. Just look in the Gloucester Daily Times. When we're held in the Times, call Leo McDonald. Find the time that we're going to go out when we sail and be at the dock. When school vacation rolled around, I was on my way to Boston in the Boston, Maine. I had a sea bag almost as big as me in the seat alongside of me. I got off the North Station, picked up a cab, go to the fish pier. That February day, it couldn't have been colder. I landed on the wharf, I went into the restaurant to get a little shin heat. I made my way down to the adventure. It was low tide. I looked down, I threw my bag aboard, and that was that. I was bound for eight days wharf to wharf on the adventure. But the eight days that I spent aboard this vessel in 1951, in the cold February on Brown's Bank, feeding 27 men four times a day, figure it, over 100 meals a day we put on the table, over 100. We were fishing the tides at 2.30 in the morning, 8.30 it was dinner, 3 o'clock in the afternoon was supper, and 9 o'clock at night was a mug up. Four meals, a howling gale. The lifeline stretched from that rigging on the starboard side all the way after the pilot house, and me and my slip shards hanging on for dear life as this vessel rolled up and down, and 80 feet of green water was up on the starboard side looking up and it was breaking over us. And I said to myself, my God, if that ever comes down on this vessel, we're gone. 25 old men, over 65 and 70 years old, were asleep in their bunks, totally oblivious to what was going on. My, I was a kid, I had no bunk. I was making my way to the pilot house. Two men were in the pilot house and through the window I saw a dim light. I, I, the, the, Light from the compass shining at the window. This vessel was purring along on my overhauled engine. Ah, what could be better? Would I do it again? I would do it again in a heartbeat. Thank you. Yeah.